final exam from the traditional schools in Kazakhstan is designed in a way that it checks how they memorize the material. Indeed, yes. So those who really are the Absolutely. best are the best in memorizing. Well, the system has to change, and I, I, it's, they have to be different. They have to be taught differently. Yeah. I'm taking personally three to four courses on Coursera or edX every year. I became, in the last 12 months, I became data scientist. Uh, without uh, seeing uh, a single professor in data science, because you can re really access these courses online. Yeah? And uh, in online courses, your class is 150,000. Yes, yes, right? indeed. And you're teaching at the same time 100,000 students globally. Yeah, the, the, the smartphones are banned during the lessons, um, right. just because you need to focus on, uh, focus on what's going on okay, inside so the room. Yeah. Okay. Having said that, um, they can, because it's the digital platform, they can be utilized in, in some areas. And it was, it was about Freud, actually. Mm. Um, and what was good was that they, they were confident enough to put their own views forward. Doing Absolutely. Our, our biggest cost at Haleybury is, is human resource, by far. It, ta it takes up more than nearly 60% of our budget, of course. It's very important. Of course. In every field, including basic math, Things are changing much faster than before. Yes. Even if even if the topics don't change, because two plus two we always before, but the way you teach it, of course, it's changing. Yeah. So you have, because of social uh, networks, uh, the widespread internet, there's the emergence of brands. There are not that many that everybody knows. Absolutely, it's a must. For the country develop to you know to develop the country status, you have to have competitive world class. Exactly. In the regions, you you know. It's much more difficult to move forward. Yes, of course. Something new happens. Of course. Some new topics emerge. Yeah. You know, it's uh, it's easier to teach them. It's more fun, mm. and then uh, yeah, also have better graduates. Absolutely. And now we we're looking at around about fifty scholarships per year to um, to children who have no financial means. We we can we can continue with that program. It's very it's very expensive because obviously. You know, 50, 50 scholarships, you know, cost a lot of money. That, that you can actually acquire the proper process of, of preparation at school and university. So that's uh, much more than just about good GPA. Yes, absolutely. I have a great pleasure to present to you this award for Haliburi Kazakhstan as a leader of transformation in 2017. Congratulations. Thank you very much. We're very proud to receive it. So... How do we want to begin? Um, I think as far as Hedibri is concerned in terms of transformation and educational transformation, we've got um, a very innovative program here. Uh, and I was talking to uh, a member of the education ministry recently about the differences between the Kazakh system and the UK system that we operate. And it's very much based on problem solving, very much based on focusing um, the students to get them to uh, a level of, of understanding that will allow them to access high quality universities so that those universities can continue their, their level of teaching um, without having to do a bridging process. So the A-level system, for example, uh, is focused enough and is intense enough to, to allow that to happen. And it gives us the opportunity to, um, to really prepare these students in a, in a, in a worthwhile way. This is crucial because at Narhos University we recruit almost 2,000 students every year for regular bachelor programs and we see what competencies, deficiencies they have and problem solving, critical thinking. For many students who come not from the very top schools, this is really a problem. Mm. And moreover, uh, the final exam from the traditional schools in Kazakhstan is designed in a way that it checks how they memorize the material. Indeed, yes. So those who really are the Absolutely. best are the best in memorizing. Yeah. And we run the correlation because we, we had entrance exams for scholarship programs. And we checked uh, results of our own test, which check problem solving, critical thinking, uh, IQ type of the questions as well, with the state ENT results. And correlation was negative 0 0.2. Wow. So the ones who are the best and who get state grants in our assessment, are not the ones who have the greatest potential. 
Yeah. Well, the system has to change. And I, I, it's really great that in Kazakhstan we have Halle Berry and other schools who sure. can teach differently. Yeah, well, that, that's an interesting point because it's a, it's a system that, if you were to take it back to the UK, would probably have been prevalent 30 years ago. Oh, yeah. and, and the development of, of that problem-solving culture is, is hugely important when it comes to, to taking it forward into the university sphere. Um, and, of course, it, as you say, it's about... Um, leadership and teamwork and, and developing confidence and public speaking and all the things that, that are the softer skills sure. that, um, that require um, development at the same time. But there's nothing less valuable than a didactic level of teaching that requires no, no challenge and input from the students except in order to memorize. Um, so I think the one thing that, that, that needs to drive change is, is, the, is the Kazakh understanding that, that where we need to be is much more closer to the Western model of, of education. Well, for, for Kazakhstan, so, it was so far so good because oil prices were high. Mm. But going forward, they need creativity, startups, innovation. Of course. So the, the youth, the students, they have to be different. They have to be taught differently. Yeah. And uh, without understanding that this is crucial for growth and development, without a uh, new breed of new talent entering the market, there won't be you know, great growth of the you know, 6 to 10 percent that Kazakhstan is used to. Mm. And there's a risk of being stuck in the low growth environment. Uh, people deserve better. So I believe uh, the changes in education are globally now so uh, visible everywhere. They are coming gradually to Kazakhstan. They have to come, and they have, of course, an importance for the development of the country. So uh, let's keep fingers crossed that authorities also understand that this is the sector mm. that we have to invest. Absolutely. I mean, yesterday I was um, on the panel for the fifth Almaty Investment Forum, and I sh remember sharing a, uh, one of the, the uh, speaking slots with um, the admissions dean from Harvard. And this was exactly what we were talking about, problem solving. And it, it's very clear that if, if big organizations are going to come to Almaty and to invest in the city, the beautiful city with a fantastic history and, and, and a vibrancy that, that really ought to be celebrated, then there has to be a world-class education environment, both for the, the executives that they're going to bring in, but also, as you say, for the, for the future children of Kazakhstan who are going to be the people who will be the entrepreneurs for the startups and for the, for the new industries that haven't even yet been, been um, developed. But changes are coming very fast. I believe in higher education, the, the reforms and changes that we saw over the last decade or two are unprecedented. And this is all due to digital technologies. Mm. I'm taking personally three to four courses on Coursera or edX every year. I became, in the last 12 months, I became data scientist. Uh, without uh, seeing uh, a single professor in data science, because you can re really access these courses online. Of course, in online platforms, you will not develop team building, critical thinking, and uh, soft skills that you need to become successful, but mm. professional skills. Now you can yes. study at Stanford comfortably, being located in Almaty yeah. and paying 50, 50 bucks. So that's a challenge because mm. institutions which are not the world class, the top class, but the average or below average, they will suffer because students will notice that instead of lousy education they receive in these institutions, they can easily, easily access uh, you know, world class education provided digitally. So there is a, a race now that only those who deliver world class education uh, can thrive and increase their market share. Yeah, and that certainly for us, there is, there is room for a, a digital um, development of, of teaching, but it has to be blended because it goes back to the point about um, whether there is a, um, a, a soft skill development you know, with team building and with, with critical thinking and all, all those skills that, that actually, without them, yeah. you're not going to, to enter into that, that top level of global enterprise. And so we need to keep this, this physical entity of school. We need to invest in, those, in the resources, 
but we also need to be aware that, that there is a digital revolution and that digital revolution needs to be embraced but not taken on without thought. Um, and you know, for us, you know, a lot of this will, will, will probably manifest itself in, in areas where there are shortages and subject shortages, where you can't physically uh, attract the best teachers. And so you end up in a webinar with somebody on the other side of the world who is a physicist or an uh, engineer or a, or a mathematician in whatever, in whatever context it might be, so that, so that more people can access that, that quality teaching. Um, but as I said, it's, it's got to come hand in glove with, with the physical human contact that, that you know, we know is so important. It's true. But interesting. Sometimes and I, 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 I used to teach, and I'm still teaching for 30 years' experience. Sometimes you can have problems handling a class of 30 or 50. Yeah? And uh, in online courses, your class is 150,000. Yes, yes, right? indeed. And you're teaching at the same time. 100,000 students globally. So this is a totally new dimension. Mm. Uh, but again, I fully agree. Uh, this is only narrow professional path. And the broader education requires yeah. physical space, community. Mm. And what's most important, uh, uh, teachers who are dedicated and capable to engage young people who are different than yeah. 20 years ago. Absolutely. Who are hooked to their smartphones they every are. second. They and are indeed, yes. How you, yes. How you, can, you, know, how you handle yes. how you it in Halliburry so yes. that you know, they, don't, they don't continue on you know, contact your Facebook. First of all, the, yeah, the, the, the smartphones are banned during the lessons um, right. just because you need to focus on, uh, focus on what's going on okay, inside so the room. Yeah. Okay. Having said that, um, they can, because it's the digital platform, they can be utilized in, in some areas. So you could have a situation in a science lab where, where the, an app is being used in order to, to, further, to further learning. I think, I think one of the biggest issues is when you're, when you're learning as an individual in a room on your own, um, there is no opportunity to, to learn from the, from the misunderstandings of others and no opportunity to challenge the, the thoughts and the processes that other people may have. And, and that becomes then a very one-dimensional way of learning. Um, and, and it goes back to the original problem, which we've just talked about, in terms of the didactic teacher to student, rather than this, this two-way process and multi-dimensional way process where the children get involved with each other as well. Uh, and I was observing a lesson um, just yesterday, and there must have been a dozen children in the, in the group. And in fact, the teacher played a secondary part because they were very much interacting with each other and having a, a philosophical debate. Um, and it was, it was about Freud, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and what was good was that they, they were confident enough to put their own views forward, but at the same time willing to accept other people's views as well. And, and I'm sure that at the end of it, that different people had changed their opinions because of their peers as much as because of, of what the, the teacher was saying. Yeah, this group learning is very important. Mm -hmm. All I must say that Narhos University, we took a different approach. We found that it was impossible to ban uh, smartphones. I mean, our groups, you can have a lecture with 200 people. Mm -hmm. how, you, mm -hmm. how you make that effective? Yeah. So we developed a technology that teachers actually are able to use smartphones to involve students. Yes. So if you ask their opinion, you, dis you display on, on the screen a, a link. Yes. You, everybody's on the internet, so you download the link, and then you actually can, you can vote. And in yes. real time, yes. you can see yes. how the votes spread across the mm. room. Or there could be dynamic uh, quiz mm. that you can answer, and someone can get points during Absolutely. the class. So you Absolutely. have a special class yeah. that, that uh, teaches teacher how to teach yes. you know, this, uh, yeah. um, this new generation of, yeah. of, of kids and uh, students. And it works. They yeah. love it. It does. It works. Yeah. It works. And, and we, you know, and we do that here as well in those certain environments. I think what's really interesting, though, is the is is the investment. You know, we talk about um, you know this this revolution in technology and in the digitizing, but but the real investment that we need to make sure continues is in the human resource of the teacher, whether that's at school level or at a university level. And of course, at Haleybury, one of our biggest cost at Haleybury is is human resource. By far, it, t it takes up more than 
nearly 60% of our budget. And the reason that is, is because we want to attract the very best teachers. Because we have a wonderful building, we have wonderful resources, but it would all be for nothing if the quality of teaching was weak. And so the pedagogical skills, whether they're in school or whether they're in university, need to be of the very best. And so the value of the teacher has to be maintained. And I think that there has to be a, a conscious decision in any society, whether it's in Kazakhstan or whether it's in uh, Mongolia or whether it's in the UK, that the, the, the importance of the teacher is paramount. And the better the teacher, the better the outcomes. And, and that, of course, that comes in different ways. That comes both in their pedagogical skills, but also their social emotional skills to actually interact with the children or the students and, um, and make them feel better about themselves, allow them to help them to understand more and to bring out the very best potential that each child has got because each one's got a different potential. And interestingly, and we know this, don't we, each one learns in a different way. So you may have some children who are, and students who are learning in a linear fashion Others will be much more mind map orientated. And it's important that, that each teacher understands that and makes sure that their lessons are, are both diverse and interesting and multidimensional. I couldn't agree more. At Harvard, I was told by the former dean of the business schools, uh, they sit together at the top university in the world and they ask, who are the five or ten best specialists in the field? And they agree collectively and they approach only those 10 best with the offer. Those who respond and they, they, you know, they, they, they you know, look at these offers and then uh, they decide. So this is showing how important it is to have really very best people mm. to teach. At Harvard it's very best globally because it's the globally best university. Yeah. But uh, in Kazakhstan or as a matter of fact, from, in Poland where I come from, the level of income or the wage level of teachers is crucial because to attract very good people who then teach our students, mm. our pupils, they have to receive good wages. Yes. And state plays an important role because state sets really a, a benchmark also for the private sector mm. how much to pay the teachers. So I, I noticed, for example, in Kazakhstan, who is in the similar GDP per capita level as Poland, wage of you know, teacher wages level is one third of that in Poland, which shows that. This indicator shows that uh, level of human capital that teaches uh, young people in Poland is, you know, is attracts much more attention and much more financial resources mm. than the same process in Kazakhstan. Somehow it shows that maybe it's not valued as much, uh, but it's wrong because I know I've been here for three years. The Kazakh families value education a lot. Of course, it's very important. Of course, so. It has to be reflected in budgetary priorities when yes. more money comes in terms of wages to yes. schools, to universities, to fund you know, the top quality people joining the universities. Yeah. And, and you're right, and that, that's something that has impressed me enormously when I, whenever I've spoken to Kazakh uh, families, is the value they place on education. Yeah. And society places on education, and yet, as you say, it doesn't get, it's not reflected in, in the, the wage structure. And, and it's interesting because We've, we've just been looking um, at Haleybury about how we manage to attract the top teachers for our next round of recruitment for next year. And, and we've spent an awful lot of time um, trying to ensure that our packages are both competitive, and not, not just in terms of wages, but in terms of accommodation and, um, and, and showing the attractiveness of the city, um, but also very importantly in terms of continued professional development for the teachers because whilst we accept that the world is becoming a village and it's becoming smaller and and everybody's moving around more um, the certainly the British teachers are becoming much more willing to travel but we have to make sure that when they're over here they continue to develop professionally yeah. this isn't a backwater it's actually a vanguard and, and the front, the you know, forefront of, of educational um, pedagogical development, and and so you know we will spend a significant amount of money this year ensuring that our staff continue their educational pedagogical growth, um, and then that that message. The great thing about social media is that that message gets around very quickly, 
And when people say, A, we're looked after financially, but B, we're looked after professionally, it then is. they want to come. And, and then we can then genuinely start to and continue to attract the very, very best teachers. It's, uh, it's the only possible winning strategy these mm -hmm. days. Narcos University will do the same. We pay above average. And also we have a very intense professional development program, more than 40 courses for academics. We were offered last academic year uh, internationally. We brought uh, top experts to Narcos to offer training here. We sent people abroad. And that, you know, you see the difference. Mm. Because I think in every field, including basic math, things are changing much faster than before. Yes. Even, if, even if the topics don't change, because 2 plus 2 we always before, but the way you teach it, of course. it's changing. Yeah. So you have to continue to develop. And, yes. and that's why so much money has to be put into development. Uh, and the only institutions that prosper and uh, are successful are those who really care about professional development of their, of their faculty. Of so uh, I'm glad that Halibar and Darhos are both uh, yes. on the same path. And you, and you have a relationship with Coventry University yes. in the UK. And do you, do you bring over um, faculty members from Coventry to, yes. uh, to teach? Uh, the Coventry University program, they are coming from Coventry to teach. Part of the program is taught by uh, our local faculty, which some of them are also international faculty. So we have uh, professors from UK who are with us on a permanent basis as well. But some courses are taught by our very professional faculty, who is Kazakh, of with you know, excellent English. Some mm -hmm. of them have spent some time abroad. So uh, you can offer very good quality program, similar quality to Coventry University, locally at lower cost, which, you know, after devaluation, makes, uh, you know, makes a difference for, for some families who may struggle. Absolutely. One of, the, um, w one of the, the projects that we're looking to develop, and I'm just about to, to head there in a, in a couple of weeks, is to build the relationship with Harvard University, um, whereby their recent graduates would be given the opportunity to come and teach in the science or maths faculty here at Haleybury for a semester. Um, and it will give them, and they won't take the place of a teacher, they'll support the teacher. So it would be, it's a wonderful opportunity for them to, to get uh, an understanding of, of what it's like to be in the classroom. Um, obviously, you know, as Harvard graduates, they'll be, be highly, highly capable. Um, but it's all, it's not just about what they, they offer in terms of maths and science, but it's their life skills as well and what they've experienced and, and, and hopefully inspiring our children to, to really aim for the very, very highest level of, of education. You touch upon uh, a fact that I uh, call celebrity university. Yes. <laughs> so there, there's, because of social uh, networks, uh, you know, widespread internet, there's the emergence of brands there are not that many that everybody knows. Mm. And, and that's the halo effect, that the brand appears that mm. indicates the, the, the quality of education. So the fact that Harvard, I don't know if we came to Halliburton, is a, is, a, is a big confirmation of the quality of education in Halliburton. Yes, in absolutely. So, so congratulations on this, Thank this you. project. Yes. It's a great project. And, and, you know, to be honest, one of the things that I want us to, to become known as is, is one of those celebrity brands ourselves in the school context. Um, and you know, we, we certainly have one of the strongest UK brands already, but there's no reason to want it to be a global brand as well. Absolutely. And, and this is one of the ways in which we, you know, we can move towards that. But I also think, and this is a re I think this is a really important point for, for Kazakh children, not every one of our graduates will go to Harvard or MIT. That, that would be, in fact, we wouldn't want them to. Exactly. We want a range of, of children. Not just a range of ability, but a range of, of aspirations and destinations, which is why Narsos is such a, an important university when it comes to, to um, the destination for, for local uh, Kazakh children. And if universities such as yours carry on improving the way that you have been since you've been there, then it, as, a, as a destination for our graduates, that can only be a good thing. And you know, to have, to have that as an alternative destination is a, is a tremendous benefit to our, to our children. Uh, and there's got to be more of them, though. You know, we've really got to have many more universities in Kazakhstan that really take the, 
the, the level that they're at and raise their game to a level that, that they start to compete with Western universities. And that's a must. For the country to develop, to, you know, to develop the country status, you have to have competitive, world-class exactly. education system. Exactly. And as we know, reforming education is not easy. It takes a lot of time, uh, a lot of effort. Sometimes you fail. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I hope that the several universities that we know in Kazakhstan who are moving really forward could be used as a benchmark yeah. or as an example for, for the others who still struggle, uh, especially when you are not in Almaty or Astana. In the regions, you, you know, it's much more difficult to move forward. Yes, of course. Uh, but kids in Atirao or Shenkian deserve great education. So uh, I hope our colleagues in, this, in these cities also uh, continue with the, the reforms. But I must say, it makes a difference. Mm. Because after the last three years were very intense. We, we did a lot of our programs are benchmarked now to good international programs. Every year, so even if you have a good program, we audit it every year. Because every year something new happens, of course. some new topics emerge. Yeah. Uh, and we noticed that over the three years, quality of students who enter university dramatically increased. We were checking their, their score on ENT test, for example, which is not the best test to measure the quality, but there was some benchmark. And uh, this, this, this increased massively over the last three years. So now we are getting you know, very good students from, from, from Kazakhstan, which shows that reforms matter, that families and students notice some good changes have happened and they want good education. And when you have better students, you know, it's, uh, it's easier to teach them, it's more fun, and then uh, yeah. they also have better graduates. And, and certainly from our perspective, we, we've developed a scholarship program um, which will allow children who don't have the financial means to access Haleybury oh, that's very important. through the, through the, um, uh, the normal route. Uh, will really have that opportunity to come and study here, and not just study here, but then carry on their study in wherever it may be. You know, if they are fortunate enough to go to one of the, you know, the super brands, um, then great, and, and we may well even support their support their studies there. But more, most importantly, it's about giving access to children who who would otherwise not have had that. And and now we, we're looking at around about 50 scholarships per year to, um, to children who have no financial means. And, and I think that does two things. It, it, first of all, it, it raises the, the profile of, of, of the school. It raises the profile of, of, of the child. Of but, um, but it also raises the, um, the awareness of the students around them of just how important education is. And that if you really want to achieve the top, then there is a price, and the price is hard work, but then there is a, there is a value to that, and there's a reward. And um, hopefully we can, we can continue with that program. It's very, it's very expensive because obviously, you know, 50, 50 scholarships, you know, cost a lot of money. Yeah. But we're very fortunate with, with very good spon uh, sponsors and shareholders who, all, very interestingly, local, local shareholders who see the value of education and see the value of how important it is if the country is going to develop in the way that, that everybody wants, and I hope everybody understands. And this is of crucial importance, because one of the trends in education, especially higher education, was dramatic increase in the cost of tuition. Mm. Um, in, in real terms of the, you know, the end fault increase in US, not so much in UK, but uh, in US. So the fact that there are scholarships and support students who can afford to study, to study at good universities of crucial importance. And that's quite often thanks to uh, alumni who want to support the university or business partners. Darjos has uh, a scholarship program, 105 scholarships from our corporate partners, from Virgin Capital, from banks, Forte Bank offers a lot of scholarships. So we are able to support more than 100 students annually to these scholarships who are from you know, low-income families, very mm. good results, mm. otherwise wouldn't be able to go to a good university. So you know, let's hope that this trend in Kazakhstan, that we can offer scholarships will increase, and the responsibility or social responsibility of businessmen will uh, also increase, and we'll see more and more money 
coming to fund the, the study of, of talented people from you know, not so uh, wealthy families in Kazakhstan. Sure. I mean, but it is a circular process, isn't it? I mean, the funding may well come from those, those entrepreneurs and those businesses, but it will be repaid a hundred times oh, over oh, yeah. once the talent is identified, once the talent is nurtured, and once the talent is realized. And, and then those talented children, students, young adults, and then eventually career, career people, will, will make such a difference when it comes to the future of the country. It's interesting. I, don't, I haven't seen a study that attempted to calculate the contribution that way. That would be very interesting. Mm. Maybe I would interest some of our students, who uh, you know, bachelor or master students, to do a dissertation on the topic, because yeah. that would be interesting. It would. Interesting. We believe that young people make a difference. Really believe in that. In, in Narhos, we uh, removed diploma thesis at the bachelor level. It's not allowed. All of them, they do a diploma projects. So we source real problems from the business community or from the city or from, from general community. The students work on the real problem, try to come up with a new product uh, for insurance company that sells well and makes profit. Try to come up with the idea of a new routes for buses to reduce traffic and improve quality of, of public transportation for the, for the citizens in a certain part of Almaty. So these are examples of projects when students really do something useful, they learn new skills, and they contribute to, you know, to better society. Mm. So that's the way we think we should use young people for the, for the good of the country, not, you know, again, copy-paste, copy-paste, or mm. you know, the often plagiarized uh, diploma thesis, yeah. Yeah. not at Narhos, they and, do different. And actually, you know, you're absolutely right. One of the worries I have is that everybody wants... To, maths is such an elevated subject that everybody focuses on it, almost to the detriment of the, the wider applied issues that need to be need to be done and of course mathematics is important but we had a we had a boy last year who um who went to ucl got oh. won a place at ucl great university um, great university number seven in the world mm -hmm. and um and i asked him what, what he wanted to study and he said urban planning and i said that's wonderful but why he said that's not a typical university yes. course he said you know he said i want to come come home to kazakhstan and make a difference because from my perspective as a as a boy growing up in kazakhstan i saw so many mistakes being made and i wanted to be the person who actually made a difference with 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 my knowledge on urban planning and hopefully we'll have more and more of those types of of degrees that as you say will come be able in the future to benefit the country and, and allow the, the, the students to very quickly start to make a, make a difference. You know, this young generation has their dreams. They want to make the better world. Of course. So, um, well, you'd hope so, wouldn't you? <laughs> and yeah. That's one of the results of our education. Yeah. We, we make them that way, yeah? that mm. they have the dreams. They believe they can be fulfilled. They get the education and tools to make it happen, actually. I believe people under, underestimate the importance of the art department. Mm -hmm. Math and math and IT, but you know, creativity is about art. It's all about creativity and, and about the people that create the creativity, which is such an important part of any, the vibrancy, the heart and the soul of the school. Absolutely. So I think the, one of the most important elements of any education system is the quality of the staff that we employ, because if we don't get the best staff, we don't get the best outcomes. And certainly at Haleybury, we found that in an international context, there are, there are many trigger points for good quality staff to come to the school. But actually, it's the quality of the school that attracts really good staff. And then what we have to do is to ensure that, that we give them the best possible package and and actually very importantly a good continued professional development um, which in a, in a world that's getting much smaller there are many more staff willing to travel but they have to believe that their professional career is going to be furthered at whichever school that they go to and I'm sure it must be the same at university as well. Oh it's very important. 
the university level. In Nahos University, we have uh, a large budget, I would say very large budget, for uh, professional training. We invite really best people to come to Almaty, to Nahos, to teach our faculty special groups. It, it is much more cost effective than sending people abroad. So have yes. one person come over. Yeah. So we had great names coming to, to teach our faculty uh, at Tahoe University. Uh, also, it's important to pay above market average, to attract above average people, plus uh, to have a system that really values those who perform well. So mm -hmm. we set up a KPI system at Tahoe University. We have HR committee evaluates annually, every faculty member, every staff member, and those who perform very well, who exceed their targets, they get wage increases and they get bonuses. So this is quite unlikely for university to have such a system, but it works well. And we really see people who strive and, and make great efforts because at the end they know they'll be really appreciated and valued in terms of uh, cash, but also in terms of professional and personal appreciation at the university. Yeah, that, that, that's, in fact, that's very innovative when it comes to education because in, in the world of entrepreneurs and business and industry, of course, bonuses and KPIs yes, that is standard, are yeah. standard. Yeah. Uh, in education, in the past, it's not been. But of course, it's exactly the same. It should be the same. We want the best and therefore we should be able to measure how well they're doing and we should be able to reward them in a way that, that, that gives the best people the best opportunities to to earn more and to, to have better packages. And it's interesting, certainly in, in, this, in the Haleybridge context, we, you know, our best teachers are also the people that are providing really diverse and vibrant extracurricular activities. And those activities are, are symptomatic of the problem solving that we expect in the classroom, except they're replicated out in, in, in the wilderness, on the sports field, in, in debating competitions, so that the, the learning that goes on in the classroom is, is built in a, in a, or built on in, in a way that the, um, that the students can really understand and, and take, take advantage of. Oh, that's crucial. We now at the university work based on the concept of student-centered learning environment. Mm -hmm. So class is only part of the, the, the whole study path. Uh, you also have student clubs activities. Uh, you have uh, student initiatives, you have stu student fundraising. This year, students at our host, they started the fundraising and raised money for the activities, for their, for the events. So, uh, and that shows, you know, if you're able to raise money, if you're able to successfully lead a student organization, you present yourself as the one with the superior leadership skills, then your position on the labor market is completely different than the one who just, you know, got a good GPA. Absolutely. So this, this environment, which you know, is developing greatly at our horse. Two years ago, we had nine student organizations. This year, we have, we have 31, just Excellent. in the matter of two years. And you see, they're everywhere. It's, you know, they're coming to my office. Please join this event, join that event. Can you take an interview for this uh, event that we have? Uh, these are great students. They're going to be great uh, you know, future workers, leaders, managers, uh, professionals. Uh, you can see it already now. And, and you're absolutely right, because the... In the past, the GPA has been the only differentiator between students. And of course now, all the best universities are looking for an extra dimension to, the, to the student. And so, co-curricular activities are really important in giving those students both the confidence and the skills to give our students the confidence that leadership training, leadership skills give them, the teamwork skills the problem-solving skills. All of these things will stand them in good stead when it comes to university, both at application level, but also, obviously, throughout their time at university. It accumulates over, you know, study at school, university, and you see the difference when they enter the labor market and they get employed, they get paid. Uh, we are running uh, annual survey we calling every hour graduate uh, three months after graduating, ask him or her, uh, did you get a job? Was it a good job? How much are you paid? So we're closely monitoring um, the, you know, the professional path after, after graduation. And yes, uh, we are running you know, very interesting data science models to understand what's happening. 
and we found, I use this science language, we found statistically significant relationship between student extracurricular life, employability, and wage level. So those who are very active during the student time got uh, better jobs and are better paid. Here you go. You have the proof that it works. That, that, that's so important. And I think that it's one of the USPs of Halebury to have such a wide-ranging and diverse and high-quality extracurricular program, which gives those students those, that, that edge when it comes to, to, um, to making the applications and to being better when they're actually at university. But of course, one of the things that, that is, is really important also is, is those teachers that are, are giving those opportunities to the children. And we've got to make sure that, that we continue to, to attract the very best because the infrastructure of the school Yes, we've got a wonderful building, we've got wonderful facilities and a great site. But all of that would be for nothing if we didn't have world-class teachers. And so it's very important in, in what is a... a it, it, certainly in, in the UK um, teacher market, it's a shrinking market. And so the, the opportunity to, to attract the very best um, is, is reducing. So we've got to make sure that we're at the top of that of that uh, pile or the front of that queue when it comes to, to getting the best teachers in, into our schools. At university level, it is also important that people who teach not only have these great skills to uh, wake up the talent in, 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 in the students and make sure that this develops in the right direction, but also they need to conduct research uh, because at the university level, you can teach well only when you do your own research because that shows that you understand the field. And in Kazakhstan, that has been a problem because teachers have to teach a lot. They have 600 hours annually uh, of active student engagement. So it doesn't leave much, much room for, for doing research. We came up at the host University with this idea of professor researchers. So we reduce their teaching load by half and we tell them half of your time you can do research. And that produces great results because students through this research have access to much better teaching to the last uh, results of the scientific you know, uh, research projects. I believe uh, that's the way forward. So that in a great university, research has to be really strongly present in the teaching itself. And that creates a great learning environment. Mm. It's, it's interesting you say that because one of the, the I think one of the, the ways in which education can can be successful in its continuum from school through to university is for the universities to be very clear about what skill sets they require before those, those students arrive at the university. Because if it's a singular, one-dimensional and very narrow perspective that the universities are faced with, then they have a catch-up program in order to get the students to the point yeah. that will allow them to be successful in their degree program, your degree programs. So from our perspective, we're always looking to hear from the best universities as to what it is, what skill levels, what skill sets, what skill developments there are that we can impart to the children to make them better students so therefore very much better able to, to take their place in the next stage of their, of their educational journey, which is the, the universities. And that has changed over the last years. Before it was all basic technical competencies. Mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to know math, you have to know this or that to be able to follow the technical complexities of the program. But universities understood this is not about uh, knowledge, the skills, attitudes, competencies that are much more important than just narrow technical competencies. That's why good universities require good schools now to do much more. To, you know, uh, develop uh, the pupils uh, more broadly about soft competencies. And only those who have those competencies are then successful in applying to the best universities, which is a uh, more challenge for schools, but also makes, I think, life of professors, of teachers and students themselves much more interesting and engaging. Of course it does. And, and that's, what, that's why it's so, so multi-layered in a school like Haleybury, where they have the classroom practice, they have the classroom discipline, they have their sport, they have their music, they have their extracurricular clubs and societies, 
public speaking. And all of those, those opportunities are given to them. And not everybody will do everything. You know, the, some people will, will be involved in the chess club. Other people will be the star soccer player. But actually, some of the skills are very transferable and, and, and cross-referenced. And it's such an important aspect of their holistic learning which is what we, we really want to do, so that they are ready. And it's, it's not just their, their academic um, profile, but their capacity to cope with university, to cope with independence, to cope with decision-making, not just in, in the lab or in the, in the classroom, but actually in their own lifestyles as well, which will, which will make them successful both at student level, but then, of course, at, in their careers as well. I think there's a dimension that we sometimes forget about, that we're preparing them not only for successful student life, but to be successful in their own life. Mm. And uh, these competences that, that have an impact on your professional life and uh, your personal life, sometimes the same, sometimes are different. For example, how not to quarrel with your spouse every day. <laughs> okay? That's a competence. Yes. That's emotional intelligence. Yes. That, that you can actually acquire the proper process of, of preparation at school and university. So that's uh, much more than just about good GPA. Yes, absolutely. They will actually have those competencies, have those skills, and have the confidence to impart them when it comes to job interviews or into career progression. And so certainly our students need to, to accept that they are part of that global environment and it's a competitive world. And the better they are in each of those different disciplines, both in and out of the classroom, the better chance they've got of succeeding. Yeah, they have to understand that they don't compete against other Kazakh colleagues, they yes. compete against Chinese, yes. Indians, there are tens of millions of them, and everybody wants their job globally. So uh, that's much more intense competition, yeah. and you, can, you can prepare for this only at the really top educational institutions. Yeah. Uh, that's why it's important how you choose and where you go. That's why the brand is important, the, the, the faculty is important. Uh, and that's why English is important. Without English, many jobs, many, many, jobs, many paths are closed to you. And Halliburton is you know, based on English education. And at the Harris University, we have double the number of hours of English for every student, whether it's Kazakh track or Russian track, they receive double hours of English compared to standard university because we recognized how important English language is for the development of the future career. I have a great pleasure to present to you this award for Halliburton Kazakhstan as a leader of transformation in 2017. Congratulations. Thank you very much. We're very proud to receive it.